Welcome to the GP Lama YouTube channel and today we see Wahoo release two new things to improve the realism of riding indoors. Firstly, RGT gets steering and secondly, the Kicker 6 gets race mode, a high frequency power reporting mode when using Direct Connect and it is super, super cool. All right, straight to the details of both of these, starting off with RGT steering, or more accurately, road positioning with RGT. There are four inputs that you can use to steer on RGT, those being the kicker bike and the inside buttons to go left and right, the new kicker steer hardware, which I'll dive into more details in just a few seconds, the RGT companion app, or you can use your keyboard to steer with the A and D buttons, or use something like a Bluetooth mini keyboard. Now, more on this kicker steer bit of hardware, hardware. Now there are no smarts in the kicker steer, it's simply a rocker plate for your phone controlled with your thumbs. You place your phone on it and it uses your phone accelerometers to steer left and right. It's RGT only at the moment. Now given the room on the front of the bike this needs for installation and to operate, it's not going to work on something like your SB20, your Neo bike, uh, a bike with an integrated out front mount that could be difficult to take off. It's not going to work with non-round bars. And on rocker plates, it could be quite interesting with the side to side motion probably screwing with the accelerometers. Anyhow, more details over on the Wahoo website, which I'll link to in the description below. So that's the hardware covered of the steering system. Now onto the software implementation and Wahoo state here that they took a new innovative approach to steering in RGT. So it's different in the way that you steer a positioning target, which your avatar will gradually move towards. Now I say gradually as it's the best way to describe the experience. You really need to think a few seconds ahead of any turn you'd like to make as it's not exactly as responsive as the racer in me would like. My preference would be to have real-time steering or as close to that real-time steering as possible for the best experience. And speaking of real-time, that is exactly what the new Kicker Race Mode is all about. So with that, onto the details of Kicker Race Mode and what it is all about. It's launched today with a firmware update on the Kicker and an app update to the Wahoo Fitness app. At this point in time, it's only for the Kicker 6 when using Direct Connect, either via Wi-Fi or the wired Ethernet option. Race Modes, which is the power reporting from the Kicker 6 from 1 hertz, so once a second, to 10 times a second, 10 hertz. This is for sim mode only, so it doesn't work in workouts, but in a nutshell, what it does is greatly reduce the lag between you pushing on the pedals and the power being reported from the trainer. Now this is very, very important in, say, e-racing scenarios that are won or lost by milliseconds, and where reaction times can mean the difference between winning a race or finishing mid-pack in that bunch sprint. Turning on or off race mode is as easy as loading the Wahoo app and toggling the switch on or off. And how does it look like in real time when riding on Zwift? Let's have a look. Alrighty, here we are to test out the new race mode. Lining up for the Aussie Hump Day ride here on a Wednesday night. One of the original bunch rides on Zwift. Now I have race mode currently enabled. After loading up the app, I will switch off race mode right now. And you can see the number there in the top left hand corner. That's instant over Dircon. Just confirming I have got it connected via Dircon. Power source, cadence, controllable over Dircon. Heart rate is connected over Bluetooth with the Zwift companion app. So that's the configuration here using the Wi-Fi. Race mode off, and you'll see the difference instantly when I turn race mode on. So we can see there 45, 43. Let me get the watts up a little bit. Oh, there's the wake up clicks for the DI2. Okay, 157, 155. You see it ticking along there, updating once every second or so. We switch on race mode, and that number bounces around a lot faster. So that's a lot closer to real time power through the pedals there, jumping up and down. You probably still want to run three second smoothing on that number so it doesn't jump around so much, but I've got it set to instant recording, or sorry, instant display to uh, show how this all works. Now within Zwift, or any other software, it should be operating on the real-time data stream, and that uh, three-second display should only be for display purposes. So all this will still work regardless of what your display setting is. Now, here's the key. If I accelerate with one pedal stroke, the number jumps very, very quickly. Ready? One, two, go! And it's almost instantly, you can see it ramp straight up. Again, and go on the right hand side, the number just bounces straight up. That response time is absolutely brilliant. 
Now I can switch off race mode and show you what it was like. So we're back to how it was. Displaying, I think, only at one hertz. Could possibly be four? Looks like one to me. But I'll do the same test, ready? Push. And there's a lag there. Push. And there's a lag there. Push, other leg. Uh, definitely not as responsive. It's not too bad, that's how we've always had it up until now, until race mode kicks in. That's how it's always gonna be with Bluetooth and Ant Plus. But race mode on again. Get that number bouncing around and push. That just bumps up straight away. By the time I've even hit six o'clock on the pedal stroke, that number's going up. Now, ah, oh, sweet. That is absolutely brilliant. So, 22 seconds and we'll get rolling. And we'll see how this works just as uh, positioning within the bunch. Here we go, rolling out into speed up. So I won't sit too near the front. I don't want to be seen as a flyer. Yes, this ride is very busy on the chat. But I'll just get my nose near the front. And typically what used to happen with Swift is you'd shoot too far off the front. It's just hard to regulate. So I'll off the pedals. And you can see up there straight away, the power drops off a lot faster. Back on the pedals, bang, straight up. <laughs> this is without a doubt the new standard of responsiveness. And it does change the experience, which I absolutely love. For years and years, we've had same old, same old for power meters and smart trainers. Things are getting a little more reliable. Yeah, more devices supporting Bluetooth. That becoming a lot more stable. But this is actually, and I'll say it, it's a game changer for responsiveness. Ready, we'll go again. Power up, power off, instant. Absolutely brilliant. Now how close can I get to the fence? It's raining in London, who would have thought? Okay, so backing off. Now that's a lot easier for me to regulate that backing off. And just not quite singeing my nose hairs on that fence there in game. All right, switching race mode off though. Let's have a look. Pushing forward, backing off. Oh, we're on a downhill now. Okay, another variable is involved. But it's noticeably different. As I back off, that shift in where that lag is, it's very evident. So trying to keep bunch position there. All right, let's stop and drop back. This is without race mode on, old school. Dropping back through the bunch, accelerating. All right, it takes a little bit of time to come up to speed. Let's get race mode back on. Again, the terrain is changing here, so it's gonna be not quite an even test. All right, so backing off the pedals, dropping back through the bunch. And, okay, accelerating. Getting back on that wheel. And just that little bit less lag. Might be only all up here. We can see the numbers change a lot faster. And as soon as I push that pedal down with a crank down, the numbers pop up on screen. So all in all, that's working as designed. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's really all it's about. As long as this new technology works as designed, puts a smile on my face. All right, ready? We should do a short, quick sprint here. And you'll see the, uh, the numbers jump up as we hit 
two percent three all right one two three go and off up and down super fast all right not much more to it than that that's it in sim mode as mentioned doesn't apply for erg mode erg mode is just here hold this number away you go but in sim mode it's all about that variability and power that you're putting out and this seems to work as designed Now for some head-to-head -head testing to answer the question, does Dircon with race mode give you a competitive advantage? So I have two riders, two different sessions here on Zwift. The riders are equal in height, weight, the bike they're on are both the same, the wheel sets, and there's no drafting on these TT bikes. Over on the left, I have race mode enabled using Dircon at 10 hertz. Over there on the right, I have the Kicker 6 connected directly via Bluetooth at 1 hertz. So both using the same power source. The difference being, again, race mode over there on the left. So the question is, will there be a competitive advantage using this? And you'll see just in a few moments as I put the power down. Over on the left, the rider starts moving just a little bit sooner with those high frequency packets. And as soon as the rider positioning gets sorted out on the Zwift servers, there's no question about it there. The rider in the blue, using Dircon, has a few bike lengths advantage from a standing start. The other rider is making a little bit of ground as those averages, I guess, round out. But there's still at least a bike length or two in that. And again, with a short sprint, opening up just a little bit more of a gap because there's just more power data coming through. Test number two, side by side, rolling along this time with a few watts and a harder acceleration. And again, the rider in blue with race mode enabled does get the jump on the rider connected to the same power source at one hertz. There's not a lot to it, but there's what, two or three bike lengths in that. And if we're talking about winning races, that's all it takes. Well, it actually takes a lot less than a bike length to win a bike race. So again, test number two, race mode with Dircon takes the cake. On to the third and final test, another standing start. And this time we'll go back to zero watts and come to a stop. So again, race mode kicks in a lot sooner with that momentum kicking in, getting many, many bike lengths ahead. And then when I coast back to zero, let's see if that delay, I guess, returns the favor on the one hertz side, so on the Bluetooth side. And at the end of the day, the answer is no. The blue rider with Dircon still remains ahead. Now, it's not a cheat as such on this because you still have to be producing the watts. There's no sticky watts. Actually, Dircon with race mode probably reduces sticky watts quite a lot. What's happening here is the game is responding a lot faster to those power packets coming in also a lot faster. So I can't think of any scenario where you would not want to use race mode when racing on Zwift or any other esports platform. You can see here, it clearly gives you the advantage in lower latency and having a lot more time to react before everybody else. That is unless everybody starts using it as well. Okay, after seeing race mode in action there in a bunch ride and also some head-to-head -head tests there in Paris, indicating there was a slight competitive advantage, let's pull up some data here of a session I did yesterday, the Paris session. Now this is Bluetooth as well as Direct Connect race mode, dual recorded. Now this is quite interesting. This is both fit files from Zwift and what you'll notice here is they look very, very similar. There's a reason for this. Even though they're reporting different power at different uh, frequencies, the data recorded is what we'd expect if we're dual recording from the same source. There's always gonna be just a slight bit of difference like here and here with the averaging. But what we can see is, and here's some steady state through here, one for one, it's pretty much the same within one watt difference there. Now this is not to say there is a difference between Bluetooth and Dircon. We saw in Dircon in real time there is. What we're seeing here though is Zwift recording one sample per second. To analyze that 10 hertz recording, we're gonna need new tools for the job. Anyhow, I thought it was interesting just to pull up this data here showing that Zwift is still only recording and reporting at one hertz. So the recorded data doesn't really change. However, the in-game experience does as we've just seen.
Okay, so there we have it for today. RGT implements steering just a little bit differently than how we've seen it in Zwift. Wahoo also released some interesting hardware for that steering as an option. There are three other ways to steer. And kicker race mode, giving you a competitive advantage if you are racing for sheep stations online. I'm keen to hear your thoughts on that. Is allowing race mode going to open up a can of worms in the competitive side of things? I'm sure there's going to be much debate on that. And I'm also keen to see if they use it in the UCI Road World Esports Championships that are coming up in just a few days. Are they confident enough to roll that out at such a high level? We shall see. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel and be alerted of new videos uploading, and we shall see you soon.